I didn't realize my father was the richest American until the late 50s. He was pretty good at concealing that. <laughs> You wouldn't expect the son of an oil billionaire to be a, an important composer. And it has raised curiosity. People say, well, what in the heck does the son of J. Paul Getty sound like? We've had composers that were lawyers, composers that were doctors. We've had all kinds of composers. So this one happens to be a very wealthy billionaire. Probably the, the richest composer in the world. I do think you can gag on a silver spoon. It's almost more dangerous to have too much money than too little. More than just a little is a curse. There are other Gettys that have dodged it, others have been clobbered. Paul Getty III, the grandson of the American millionaire, was released in exchange for a $3 million ransom, but only after his abductors had cut off his right ear. I was with Gail when she received his ear in the mail. Mm. Great God. But there's a couple of moods in your music, Gordon. One is this very kind of innocent, lost in the glow of love or remembrance of love. And there's also another mood of yours, which is a kind of challenging, eerie mood, this specter of terror on the other side. We journey to the day and tell each other how we sang to keep the dark away. Well, the musical devices are a little scary. <laughs> the subject is the walking dead. <laughs> He's living in his own world, oh, work of fantasy, work of art. It has to be a complete picture. There has to be yin and yang to it. It has to be me. There is this perception with a lot of people that if you are that famous and wealthy, you can't be a real artist, which of course is nonsense, but that's what people think. Sometimes I get a little bit impatient with people that think I'm a dilettante. I gotta worry about my reputation. Music is something bigger than me. It's a mountain I'm trying to climb.